Welcome back to Gen 1. Let's talk roping. comments asking if I could do kind of a more beginner uh, video for you guys when it comes to roping and I think we're gonna go that route I have my lovely assistant with me today come on back here aka the beginner roper so basically what I'm gonna do is um, talk hunter through roping this hay bale and uh, I'm going to crit critique her um, and hopefully she doesn't get mad at me and uh, We'll talk about the different um, fundamentals of roping from the ground up, basically, from beginning to end. From beginner to advanced, I guess, would be the better way to put it. So, first off, <laughs> first off, we need to talk about the rope layout. So this is called the tail of your rope. It's the furthest way, furthest part away from your hondu, or your loop, I should say. In between, you have all these coils. This is a 60 foot rope, so it has a lot more coils than um, you might be used to or you might see in a store somewhere. Uh, this is my personal go-to rope. And then on in your right hand, if you're right-handed, learning how to rope, this is called your loop. And basically anything inside this hondu is the loop. This is your hondu here. Um, and this is a burner. This is a plastic speed burner that I put on myself. Most of them come with some sort of rawhide uh, burner. But uh, so from there, I guess we'll talk about loop size. And what I like to do, what size loop I like using is about a five foot loop. This is about a five foot, five foot six loop. We'll just jump right into it. I guess I'll show you maybe how I see majority of people when they're when they learn how to rope I see them most of the time throw this rope out here like this and they build it like this and they have a loop and well that's a good example there they got a figure eight in their rope like that and they have it held right here by the hondu and they go to swinging and you will never catch anything doing that so build your rope with coils in your hand if you start out with the right basics, right fundamentals, you don't have to go back and fix bad habits. And so, start with coils in your hand, learn how to build coils into your hand, and learn how to build a loop. Best way, like I said, is to take it and flip it over your wrist, thumb down to thumb up, like that over your wrist, slide your hondu up towards your loop, or towards your coils, and do it again. So thumb down, to thumb up, I could say this way too, palm down to palm up, either way, whatever you guys want to think of, and just build a loop. Once you have the right size loop, don't forget your spoke, about two and a half feet of spoke and then your swing and the way I do it is what I teach people when I am teaching them how to rope is point your thumb up and when you swing 
you're going to rotate your hand from thumb up to thumb down, thumb up to thumb down. So when you swing, it's thumb up, thumb down, and you're going to bring your hand or your arm above your head. So thumb up, thumb down, and above your head. When you get over here, you're already naturally going to be in a thumb up position. So thumb up to thumb down. And when you come above your head, your hand is naturally going to be in a thumb up position again. So when it comes around, all you have to do is rotate the rotate the swing. And it's going to look pretty goofy for a while until you get a feel for it. When you get a feel for it or your thumb gets tired, tuck your thumb in and just go ahead and practice that swing. And what you'll find is your rope will come from over the top of your head and you're going to feel that natural whip at the end of your rope. The faster you swing and the more comfortable you get and it's going to, your loop is basically going to try to outrun the rest of the rope. So the tip of your rope is going to try to outrun the rest of your loop. That's what I meant to say. Tip of your rope is going to outrun the rest of your loop. And that's what you want. You want that flop on the right hand side kind of in front of your body. So when you feel that flop, that's your delivery point. When you deliver, you're just going to feel that flop and that's when you deliver. You open your hand and point towards your target. So go ahead and build another loop and you're just going to rope that rock, keep it as flat, keep your loop as flat as you can. So is my goal to have my loop land like this? With the rock in the center of your loop as best as possible. So you're going to swing more flat and when you deliver your hand needs to be flat. That's pretty good. Now take that exact thing, same thing and rope that bale of hay. What you're gonna act like is that rock is placed on the back of that calf's head, so right on top of that bale. And you're gonna act like you're gonna rope that rock and that bale doesn't exist. So, as you swing, just like that. And you can see how that rope is about halfway back on that bale. It's a little further than halfway, but that's okay. And that loop came all the way across the bottom of the bale and came over to the left, her left hand side a little bit. That's exactly what you're looking for. So do that one more time. <clears throat> Doing that actually really helped to think about how to deliver it. You can even basically take something and place it on top of your bale of hay and that's all you're looking at. That's all you're roping. Is that rock right there. Don't think about the bale. All you're doing is Concentrating on your swing and your delivery. Just like that. So now that you kind of got the fundamentals down on that, I want to try two more loops with you. Pretty simple, really. We're going to leave that rock right where it's at. That rock, like I said, represents the back of the calf's head. Now I just want you to move to your left, four big steps. Right there. Now when you swing, your tip is going to be over your left shoulder. Maybe not quite that dramatic, right there. And when you deliver, you're gonna deliver right at that rock the same way. The only difference is your, your delivery is gonna come down at that same angle as your loop. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. 
and you're gonna aim at that rock. That was close. But I know. No, you, I mean, you caught. The only thing that you didn't do is follow through through delivery. You kind of, when you delivered, you kind of stopped up here. Mm. Instead of coming all the way down and through on your delivery. So basically... So I'm letting go here then? Yep. Not? Not up there. So you want to come down and you want to deliver when your hand... Basically, if you were to think of it as if your hand could extend, you're reaching out and grabbing the back of that calf's head. That's when you want to deliver. Go down here. Yep. So you're going to swing and you're going to look right here and that's where you're going to deliver. Okay. There you go. Just like that. Obviously, if, if this wasn't for video purposes, I'd have you rope that probably a hundred times until you're really comfortable with it before moving on. But now we're going to go to the right hand side of that calf and uh, Farther like this. right there, uh, one more step right there. Now you're going to be swinging with the sidearm swing. And what this represents basically is if you were in the healing position your header missed when you're out doctoring a calf. Now you're in position to take a sidearm swing, kind of a crossover shot. And you can see her tip is off to her right hand side and she's doing more of an up motion with her, with the tip of her rope. And when you swing, you're gonna aim for that yellow string on top, okay? And in front, so the yellow, yellow string but in front of that bail. So then my delivery would be Your delivery is going to be okay. Yep. Like a scoop pretty much, yeah. And hold on to it till here or Yeah, you want to deliver You want to deliver basically at the bottom of the calf's nose, I guess would be more of a way to think about it. Just like that. That feels really uncomfortable. <laughs> feels like I'm gonna fling it up way over its body. But because that calf would have a head sticking out there, it can't, yeah. right? And when I was first learning this loop, I would catch the front feet most of the time because I was delivering too soon. So you wanna make sure that you don't deliver too soon or too late. You wanna deliver, <laughs> yeah, technically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not too soon, not too late. Catch the head. Right. Got it. And something I'm going to add mm -hmm. is Wyatt has told me before the angle on this calf's head would be here. So wherever I go, my rope is trying to be at that same angle. Correct. And you've told me that before, and that's what I think of every time that I rope and it's helpful which to... yeah which is basically true right now that rope is basically at the same angle that calf's head would be at well what I'm doing is imagining a head on it mm -hmm. and my rope coming just at the same angle as its face correct your swing looks great. Your delivery looked good on that last one. My arm is tired. 
Oh, when they do that time. So what you did there is your delivery was actually flat. Like this? Twice long. So your swing was right and your delivery was flat and that caused the tip of your rope to roll. And it rolled from the bottom up over the top of the calf's head. More than likely you still would have caught, but it would have been pretty ugly. <laughs> so when you swing, you want to swing and you want to deliver with that same angle. If you swing like this and you deliver like this with your hand flat, naturally that rope wants to curl and come up and your tip wants to go over the top of that calf's head. Okay. So swing. Whoa. <laughs> I was going to try it, then I decided last minute not to. <laughs> there you go. And when you swing, just keep that same motion and deliver. Just like that. And the good thing to practice too while you're roping the bale of hay is to walk up to that calf's hip and then take two big steps back. And that's about how far you need to be. Right there. Really yeah. Just like that. That's what you want to do over and over and over again. Once you get comfortable with that, you can take another step back and another step back until you you're consistently catching basically at any angle and at that point then you could start advancing your loops and trying different things and playing around with this that and the other but you want to build a good foundation so you don't have to go back and fix bad habits tip down a little more right there For one, your loop was too small okay. and you were too far away. If your loop was a little bigger, that'd be perfect distance, okay. but be the size of your loop to the distance, distance ratio, you were a little off. Okay. So with a little bit bigger loop, and because we haven't talked about dropping a coil yet, you're basically limited to your distance. Tip down, aim right for the back of that rock. There you go, perfect loop, perfect. You could see that rope was at this angle. When it came across, it was from here to here. And that shows that her loop, her tip, was a little bit off that left, left shoulder. If that rope would have landed like this, you would have known that that tip was as flat as it could be. And it's okay to have it over here a little bit more as long as you can get it over the top of that right ear on that calf's neck so that when it does wrap around, it figure eights on the other side of that calf's head. A lot of times, if your delivery is just a little bit off, you'll hit with that top strand right behind that rock we point at that. Here. You'll you'll land with that the top strand basically right between the calf's ears is where it would end up. And so you just want to be aware of that and be kind of cautious uh, when you're practicing these loops to make sure that your the top strand of that loop is on the far right hand side of that calf's body, about there. One thing I want to talk about is dropping a coil. So dropping a coil is when you have your loop in your right hand, your coils in your left. And when you need a little bit more distance, which takes a lot of time to kind of judge and figure out, when you deliver, you're actually dropping one or two coils and that gives you your distance. So that when you're, say over here, and you're 
header misses and you need to catch that calf, you can be a further away with a smaller loop and you can drop a coil or two and you can get that loop out there a little bit further from your horse without having to build a bigger loop. After all that, teaching you I miss, that's cool. So, drop a coil. See I dropped one, two, three coils there. And that got that loop out there further away from my horse. And another thing I want to talk about is sliding some rope. And so, on a side note, you want to have all your coils in a line. And basically, the basically, <laughs> pretty much you want your coils the same size. Um, keeping everything organized in your left hand will one make you a better roper, and two will help your horse out in the long run. You won't be fumbling with your coils and grabbing your reins on accident, stuff like that. And so just keep that in mind that you want your coils nice and even. But you could take a loop, what size is this, you think, maybe four foot? And you can swing that loop and you can actually build it, make it grow into a ten foot loop without uh, without stopping and putting another coil in your hand. If you do that too many times, you start getting this figure eight in your loop that will close on you when you go to deliver. But you can add a coil or maybe even two into your hand without stopping and putting it in manually, as I'd say. On the other hand, if you have a big loop, you're getting ready to heal. I use big loop when I heal. And you have to go ahead and neck that little baby calf in the Brandon pin. You can rotate your coils around and you can shrink that loop to a manageable size to rope something around the neck. What else? That's pretty much it. I uh, thank you guys for watching and if you have any questions leave them down below. Um, let me know what you guys want to see next. Hopefully you learned something. We'll see you on the next one. Deuces.